Okay, hello, um, out there. We're just at Howwood Fishery up near Renfrew in Scotland, and we've been doing some fishing for rainbows earlier this morning. It's been very misty with some quite good results. We've got some large blue trout and tiger trout. I'd like now to show, before we go into further up the reservoir, to do some dry fly fishing, some techniques with the um, lighter lines and rods. This is actually a nine foot three inch carbon fiber rod and a weight forward five weight line. Now a lot of people, they tend to use heavier lines in still water fishing, you know, seven, eights and even nines. But if you watch the technique here with the lighter line, you can certainly get very good accuracy, but most of all, you can actually, by using the double haul technique, you can increase the distance greatly, even though the line is quite light. And the main thing to think about is the change of the rod grip. Normally people put their thumb along the top of the rod handle. If you marginally put your thumb to the left, that opens up a V-shape and that gives much more power than the one unit where your thumb is. You can push the rod forward with much greater strength. It also helps to pillow the rod in your back cast under your forearm. So if you watch here with the, the light line, you can see how there's not any great effort to propel the line forward. I'm simply lifting it up allowing it to straighten and then going into my forward cast. You'll notice also that the important feature is the tension between the butt ring and your left hand. That controls the overall line speed and tension throughout the entire length of the line. If that's allowed to go slack, that slack is taken up and the line loses control and speed. Now to get more distance with a lighter line, it's very, very important to maintain that tension. And if you watch here, I'm simply lifting the rod from a low position, allowing it to straighten and then going into the forward cast. Now if you want to do some longer casts with a five weight, the technique again is simply maintain that tension and then give a slight pull in the forward cast and see how you can shoot in fact, you can shoot the whole 35 yard line out with that just short pull and how you can get a very good presentation by aiming approximately four feet above the water and allowing the line to flow onto the water surface. If you visualize a shelf and you cast along that shelf, you get a much better presentation. And this is one of the things that people, particularly beginners starting out, they aim too near the water surface. Think in terms of aiming above the water and follow on down with the line and the rod tip and you get a much better presentation. Lift up high in the air and allow the line to flow onto the water surface. Now I'd like to now go on to do some much longer cast by increasing the speed and the pull with my left hand. And you'll notice here, I'm actually bringing the power quite close to my shoulder and then going into the forward power stroke. It's just last movement, as if you had a hammer and you're turning your wrist over to hammer in the nail. That increases the speed of the rod tip and gives you much greater speed in the whole fly line. So if you watch here, I'm actually pulling. You can see the whole line can be shot out. That's a 35 yard line without any great difficulty. There's not a lot of effort required. It's purely maintaining this tension and then getting as much compression in the rod as possible. And this is what results in speeding up the whole line and gives you much greater distance and also much greater control. And you'll see later when we go on with the slight demonstrations, casting into the wind is very, very important that you maintain that tension. It gives more control obviously throughout the whole casting movement and helps to particularly casting into the wind, tighten up the line loop and without any great difficulty you can cast in a lot of arcs simply by remembering that slight pull and then follow on with the rod tip and you see how the line lands very straight. That's not a rainbow, is it? No, it looks like a tiger. I think, it's a, I think that's a tiger trout. Mm -hmm. Quite good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. That's a tiger, isn't it? That's not bad, isn't it? How was it? Yeah, it was, it, I think that was on a lure. It was on a, on a, a green and pink, pink lure quite deep down in a, an intermediate line. 
a uh, very, very good fight. They tend to fight like brown trout, they seem to bore down quite a bit. So that would be about, um, about four, just around about four pound mark. This is us now in the water um, at True Valley Lake here and if you watch here, longer cast fishing from a boat is very very important to keep the speed up in your back cast. If you open your wrist up too much or if you slow down, unfortunately the line is going to fall behind you and it's caught up in the water. So what I'm doing here is actually, as I said earlier, on the bank, maintaining the tension between the butt ring and my left hand and making sure that the speed is kept fairly high both in the back and the forward cast and again for a good presentation aiming fairly high with a long length of line so if you watch here I'm actually pulling again down and keeping a high keeping the line up at the back and then doing the see the whole line can be shot out without any great difficulty now again this is a 35 yard line and you can see how the whole line can be shot out with that sharp pull on the forward cast always making sure that you don't allow the line to drop behind you. Make sure the line is held fairly high by pulling, stop, pulling up. The whole line is shot out. Now, if I cast again, and this time slightly angling the rod away to my right, this is because the wind's picking up coming over my left shoulder. It's useful to vary the arc of rod movement when you're casting and make the wind work for you instead of working against you. So if you watch here, I'm actually flattening out the cast and doing the same motion, only holding the rod at a slightly different angle. And you can see how that gives you a much fluent action. Pull up, forward. You see the whole line shot out right down to the backing. Gives a good 35 yard cast and helps you to cover quite a length of water when you're boat fishing. The main thing is to think about the line as an extension of the rod, particularly when you're lifting a line off the water. You don't have to think about the line forming in loops in the water, otherwise it takes longer to create tension in the tip of the rod. Try and lift off from a very straight length of line in the water, straight into your back cast and with a couple of false casts you then do the forward motion. Just lift down, get it forward, straight back, and then you can see the whole line can be shot out without any great difficulty.
So I just landed a four pound uh, true rainbow, if you notice the excellent condition, a tremendous fight from it, uh, taken fairly out with a fairly long distance cast from the boat, probably around about uh, 40 metres. Uh, that took um, a dial back and the middle dropper uh, had a blob in the point, probably which pulled the fish up and the, um, the fight quality is tremendous. So you can see the, the good condition that you, you get in th this water here. So hopefully that's the fish starting to come on now. And this is approximately half past six in the evening. Beautiful night here. And the wind um, is coming from the southwest. One or two fish are starting to move. So hopefully this is the start of two or three fish of this size. are again into another fish at the Chew Valley Lake. A bit smaller this time but tremendous fight and again taken off the top of the water. This one took a, a dial back a size 12 and you can see here the fight from these fish is tremendous. Very very good quality fish and you see bring it to the top here how how they fight. The rod been pulled down right under. There we are up to the top. Stick the weight under it. A lot smaller than the other one, but still very, very powerful fish. There we go. I think the, the first thing you must consider is that you want to try and keep the fish in water when they're in the net, and normally a long um, set of forceps is much better to reach into them and just gently take it out and give her a slight uh, few minutes in the net to fully revive and just tip them back into the water again. A lot of people are saying that um, catch and release it tends to put um, fish off, but I've, I've not found that. If you handle them gently and take your time and allow the fish to swim away and recover, you, you then have the, the chance to keep fishing on. And maybe in some situations you have to put 10 fish back. As long as you do it carefully, there's not any, I don't think, um, dire consequences to the fish after that.